हेलो एवरीवन सो वेलकम टू द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑन लाइन इंटीग्रल्स सो लाइन इंटीग्रल्स आर आल्सो समटाइम्स कॉल्ड एज द कर्व इंटीग्रल्स बिकॉज वी विल इंटीग्रेट अलोंग द कर्व एज वी विल सी एंड इंस्टेड ऑफ डायरेक्टली स्टार्टिंग विद द डेफिनेशन एंड द एग्जांपल्स लेट मी फर्स्ट गिव यू व्हाट आर द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ लाइन इंटीग्रल सो वंस यू नो द एप्लीकेशन एटलीस्ट यू विल गेट सम मोटिवेशन टू स्टडी लाइन इंटीग्रल्स और द curve integrals so these are the some of the applications which i have written down that or some of the areas where line integrals are used very widely so like it helps us to find curve surface area area enclosed by the curve it help us to find work done mass of the wire center of mass and the famous faraday's and ampere's law so i am going to spend few minutes on each of the topics or each of the points so that you realize the importance of line integral so let's go one by one so let's first see how does it helps us to find the curved surface area so what curved surface area means what so what i want to say precisely is say you have already seen integration okay right when you were in your college or the 11th or 12th what we have seen is if you integrate along a segment suppose this is 2 and suppose this is 6 and suppose i have a function which is in the first quadrant and suppose if i want to integrate so this is my function and if i want to integrate my function from 2 to 6 what i get i will get some number so if i integrate this over a segment what the segment was it's 2 comma it's 2 to 6 it's a subset of real numbers and if i integrate my function over this interval what i get is i get the area under the curve so this integration helps us to find the area under the curve but now suppose instead of integrating this over a segment which was a subset of real numbers what if what if i integrate along the curve so now suppose if this is the curve this is my point a this is my point b so now i want to integrate and suppose f is some function suppose f is a function suppose let's take r2 to r so f is my scalar field scalar because the output is a real number that's why scalar field and if i want and this is my curve c so if i want to integrate my function over this curve c then what does this mean there is the question so now here if you realize in the previous case my domain was a sub subset or you can say it's a subset of real numbers here my curve it's a curve right so it lies in a plane it lies in r2 so now if i want to integrate over this curve then question is what does that what does this integral represent so now since it's a scalar field so the graph of f so if i try if i try to draw the graph of f it is what it's a surface the graph will lie in r3 so i have some surface over here and if i integrate over this curve then what i get i get the surface area of the region which region the region which is above the curve and below that surface so if you have some surface something like this and if i integrate i get this so this is the part of z equal to f of xy so you can say like kind of a curtain kind of thing right because so i had a surface i have some curve and i want to integrate above this curve so this was my curve and this was my surface so if i integrate above this curve what i get i get the area which is above this curve and below the surface so you can see it's a kind of a surface area that's why i wrote curved surface area so i get the area above the curve and below that part of the graph so that's how one can look it as a generalization of the previous integral so when i integrate along a curve i get that kind of a surface area or you can imagine it's a kind of a curtain curtain over here whose area we are getting so that's one way of looking at it so it helps us to give the curved surface area you can say so that's one thing second was it helps us to find the area which is enclosed by a closed curve so what do you mean by a closed curve so you start with a point it will travel that curve will again meet at the starting point it will never cross at any other point for example if you take this this is not a closed curve because it is again cutting at in between points so when you say close to be a closed curve if it starts at a point and it ends at the same point and when you travel when you travel it doesn't even cut at any other points so this is a this is a closed curve now question is what is the so this is the region 
enclosed in this curve. So question is what is the area of this region? So there is a theorem called the Green's theorem which, are, which we will see and then using Green's theorem one can easily prove that area of this closed curve is nothing but this is a symbol whenever the curve is closed we give this circle notation it is nothing but if you integrate y times dy this is same as if you integrate minus x dx or this is same as 1 by 2 integration of closed curve y dy minus x dx if you solve any of these three quantities you will get the area enclosed by that closed curve and one can derive this it's a very simple result but we need Green's theorem for that so I will come to it but yeah it helps us to find the area enclosed by the closed curve so that was the second application of line integral it helps us to find the area okay now let's go for the third example or the third application the third one was with the work done so now suppose if I have a path say a path joining the point say A and B and suppose there is some object O is some object now what, what I want to do is if I want to move this object from point A to point B along this path so there is some force field acting on this object because if I am moving an object obviously there is some force acting on this object so if I apply some force the object will move so if F is that force vector field and if I want to move this object from A to B through this path then if I integrate this along this curve what I get I get a number and what is this number this is nothing but it is the work done there is nothing but the work done in moving an object in moving an object from A to B along this path so that's one thing so it helps us to find the work done in moving an object where F is the force free acting on this object and it's obvious that if I take this path then there is a possibility that the number will change so we will see that the line integral will depend on the path as well so if I want to approach two points from different different paths sometimes I may require more force sometimes I may require less force sometimes I may require equal force in that case I will get the same answer but then yeah so it mainly depends on the path so therefore we will see that line integrals are path dependent and some few more things later on so it helps us to find the work done in moving an object from A to B similarly like those who are in uh, field of electrical engineering or ENTC or uh, those who play with the physics and uh, I mean the circuits and all those things even they need line integrals where they need line integrals because if you have some curved path and if you if you have a particle if you have a charged particle which is moving and suppose this is some force field so if f is my force field and if I integrate this f over this curve then what it will give me it will give me the work done in moving this charged particle from this point to this point so and uh, since obviously it will depend on the curve so it also helps us to find the work done work done by the charged particle by the charged particle where f is the force vector field so this, those are the force vector field and uh, you, you do the line integral you get the work done what I wrote one more was the swimming one so suppose if you are swimming or suppose you are in an ocean and uh, so suppose if you are in an ocean and and if you are swimming in an ocean and uh, suppose if you go from one point to another point so you are at point A and you are going at point B through this path then since it's an ocean so there will be some ocean currents so that will be my force vector field so if I know that force vector field and if I integrate my force vector field along this curve I will get the work done by me while swimming from point A to point B and once I know what is the work done I can easily calculate how much calorie how much calories I burn while going from A to B so obviously it will depend on the ocean currents because if the currents are against me I will be doing more work hence more calorie will be burned so knowing the force vector field so knowing the vector fields and the path I can calculate what is the amount of work done from going from point A to point B and once I know the amount of work done I can tell you how much calorie I have burned so that is one more application of uh, 
वर्क डन वन मोर एप्लीकेशन ऑफ लैंग इंटीग्रल्स सो लाइक मेकेनिकल इंजीनियर सिविल इंजीनियर्स दे यूज दिस अलॉट दो वर्क इन मेकेनिक्स दे नीड लैंग इंटीग्रल अलॉट इट ऑल्सो हेल्प टू फाइंड मास ऑफ अ वायर टोटल मास इट ऑल्सो हेल्प टू फाइंड द टोटल मास इफ यू हैव सम वायर और यू टेक अ रोप एंड सपोज इफ रो इज नथिंग बट इट इज द मास पर मास पर यूनिट लेंथ रो मीन्स दिस इज नथिंग बट सो एट इच पॉइंट रो ऑफ एक्स वाइज जेड सो इफ दिस इज सम कर और दिस इज सम रोप एंड इट विल हैव इट्स एक्स वाई एंड जेड कंपोनेंट at each point it will have x y and z component and if i know the mass per unit length which is a continuous function so if i know this mass per unit length at each point and if i integrate this row over this curve this is my curve c if i integrate this function over the curve what i get i get the i get the total mass of the wire so it helps us to find the total mass of the wire provided i know the row i mean if mass if i rho is mass per unit volume then it is called as a density but here it is mass per unit length so yeah so once i know the rho i can find uh, the total mass of the wire and uh, once i have the total mass there is something called as first moments and uh, using first moments one can find the center of mass of the wire how one can find center of mass of the wire the formula for the center of mass is x bar if these are the components of the center of mass the formula is m y z upon m m is the total mass m x z upon m m x y upon m m is nothing but the is the total mass of the wire and what are m y z m x z and m x y they are called as the first moments of the wire where m y z is nothing but you do the line integral x times dr where your m x z we will see what in the definition what is this dr means so x into rho dr rho was my density what is my m x y x z since y is missing it is y times rho and what is m of x y it is nothing but z times rho so these are called as the first moments of the wire so using line integrals you can find first moments using line integral you can find mass of the wire and once you have these two things you simply take the ratio what you get is the center of mass of the wire so this is one more application of line integral which helps us you, which helps you to find the center of mass first moments and the total mass of the wire and last but not the least uh, those who play with uh, electromagnetics or like the faraday's and the ampere law so faraday's whenever you see this law faraday's and ampere's law they involve line integrals if you see solve a problems using faraday's or uh, faraday's or ampere's law it involves line integral so like if you see what do you mean by what is the faraday's law i mean i won't be spending much time on this so those who work in this field they know much better so what does the faraday says that the electromotive force around a closed path so as you can see the closed path is coming into the picture so if you have a electromotive force along a closed path that is equal to the negative of the time rate of change of the magnetic flux and uh, one can use one can use kelvin stokes theorem to to derive that faraday's law is nothing but so if you have a uh, electric field along a closed path so along some curve then that is nothing but negative of the rate of change of the flux this is curved surface area this is the boundary of that surface so one can see that line integral uh, also comes into the faraday's law one needs a proof but anyways what i want to say i what i want to stress on the point is faraday's law involves line integral similarly you can see ampere's law also involves line integral so these are some of the applications of line integral so like electrical people entc people mechanical civil so all these people do require line integral a lot obviously these are very less number of applications but i hope by knowing this application you will realize the importance of line integrals and uh, you will start solving it uh, in the next session we will talk about line integrals in detail
So I hope this was helpful. If you have any of the concerns or doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you.